CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... oneself of folly is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, but given the state of affairs today, to avoid both folly and vice is a full-time job. And we are left with little energy or leisure for anything else. I wouldn't dream of it. Come on, Carter. It's completely against every moral principle. What's so terrible about it? I have my own sense of values. I don't care to discuss it any further. You ever get headaches, Carter? Yes, I suppose I do, sometimes. You want to know why? It's because your halo is on too tight. Our mystery drama, Jerry the Convincer, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Paul Hecht. I'll be back shortly with Act One. simple, but assumes some mark of virtue on its outward parts. When Mr. Shakespeare wrote that line, did he even dream that almost 500 years later it would become the theme of a permissive and self-indulgent society? Probably. Some things never change. Officer Bernie Talon's patrol car is obscured by a clump of trees near the side of the road. You could say it's a speed trap, but then... If you're obeying the law, why should it matter? Well, Bernie, my boy, leave us find out where he's off to. So, where's the fire? Uh, at the yacht club, officer. I had my radio on. I didn't hear anything. And what I meant is, officer, my friend's boat caught fire. Oh, and you were speeding over there to help him put it out. You mean there's nobody else around? Huh? Uh, what I meant was... How uh, long has this uh, Leviathan been burning? I didn't say it was on fire. Now, what I said was that it had caught fire. Ah, uh-huh. that gives you the right to break the speed laws, yes. yeah? Oh, no, no, it doesn't. Well, what does, then? The fact that you're driving this fancy imported sports job? Uh, officer, are you going to give me a ticket just because I'm driving an expensive car? Well, I could say I'm giving you a ticket because uh, you ought to know better. <sighs> I could say I'm giving you a ticket because there's an energy crisis and you're wasting gasoline. I could say I'm giving you a ticket because guys like you, who seem to be well-off and well-educated, should set an example for other people. I could say all that. But the fact is, you're getting a ticket because you were doing 95 in a 50-mile zone. So give me a license and registration. Sue, tell me what happened. First, tell me what you're going to have. I came as quickly as I could. How about the usual? Hmm? Sarah Jean, club special for Mr. Ellsworth and a uh, little reinforcement for me. Carter, what bitches? Oh, no, it's just a minor thing compared with what happened to you today. Now, how did the boat... Oh, let's get you a minor little thing out of the way first. No, no, it's not even worth talking about. <laughs> I was in such a rush to get down here, I uh, I got a ticket. Oh, is that all? Let me have it. No, no, what for? I'll get it fixed for you. No, no, I'd, I'd, I'd rather not. Why? I don't think I'd feel comfortable about oh, it. Don't be silly. No, look, forget it. I can't. I feel responsible. Look, it's nothing. It'll cost you a $50 fine. I did break the law. Give me the ticket. Then donate the 50 to your favorite charity. <sighs> Well, I've never done a thing like this before. Yeah, it's always the first time for everything. Hand it over. <laughs> you know, I think I will. And you know why? That cop, the the one who gave it to me. Uh, oh, yeah, Officer Bernard J. Talon. You'd think I was a criminal. I mean, you know how some cops can be arrogant and condescending? Here's your club special, Mr. Ellsworth. I mean, I tell you, Stu, I, I could have killed him. And uh, yours was on the rock, Mr. Nelson? Yeah, you know, I was so angry. You know how you get. I mean, if I had a gun, I would have shot Officer Bernard J. Tower. <laughs> oh, you kidding, Mr. Ellsworth. Don't I 
you. You can never shoot me, Betty. Oh, don't be too sure of that, Sarah Jean. You should hear how he talks about you sometimes when the service is low. So. Uh, you gentlemen want to order lunch now? Uh, no, why don't you come back in a little while? Okay. Well, tell me about the Lorelei. Ah, the Lorelei. She's gone, Carter. Gone. I mean, it was over in ten minutes. Burned right down to the water line and sunk. But how? I, I had this guy working on the engines, you know. I he must have been smoking. Swears he wasn't. But, well, what are you going to do? Fortunately, I'm fully insured. Yeah, but even so, I know how you felt about that. That's not even talk about it. Look, I need your help. You got it. I have to buy your boat. Sure, you got her. I mean, nobody can handle her like you can, so I'll need you, too. Well, you got me. Tomorrow night? Yeah, Millie's on the West Coast visiting her mother. I, I'm free. You want to go fishing? Uh, this is business. Oh, business? Mm. You know, actually, for this kind of work, your Xanadu is better than my Lorelei would have been. I mean, she's bigger, faster. <laughs> what kind of work are you talking about? We're going about 25 miles due east of Dutchman's Cove. But why? We're going to rendezvous with, uh, I think, he said it was a four-masted schooner. We'll pick up 5,000 pounds, a little more, a little less, of pot. Well, what what are we going to pick up? Pot. Grass. How, mother? <laughs> What's in a name? Do I don't think this is very funny. And for three hours of nice, light, easy work, we each collect $25,000. It's against the law. The law is a joke. Nobody obeys it. Not even you and you and our roommates at uh, State. Didn't we smoke pot? Yeah, well, we were trying our wings, I guess. Yeah, well, it was like the, the old gent telling me about prohibition. Who paid any attention no, to No, no, look, suppose we drop a card. But come on. You know, you know, you know something? You know, you're getting fat? You must have put on 15 pounds at least since college. You know why? Because you don't do anything that's really exciting. You mean you've already done this kind of thing? Once. Last July. Still. Listen, it puts a little spice in your life. A little action. I mean, is it enough for you to sit around all day and figure out how to sell housewives that, 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 that slop to clean their rugs? It's to dye their hair. Well, whatever. It's $25,000. I don't mean it. Everybody needs $25,000. You going to be in your office later? I want to send Jerry around to see you. Jer uh, who's Jerry? Jerry the Convincer. Don't waste his time, your time, and my time. Carter, as a courtesy to me... And another thing, give me back that traffic ticket. Do you ever get headaches, Carter? Well, I suppose I do. Sometimes. You want to know why? It's because your halo is on too tight. Uh, continuing the media report. Uh, research in our top seven markets demonstrates that 25,000 women between the ages of... You know, why did I just say that? Research in our top seven markets demonstrates that uh, 25,000 women between the ages of... Well, where on earth did I get that figure? 25,000. Carter Ellsworth? Uh, how did you get in here? Getting in, getting out, that's one of the tricks of the trade. Well, who are you? You know who I am. You've been waiting for me to lay out the deal. I'm Jerry, one of the semi-mains in the outfit. The what? I report to the mains, you know. So... It's all set. Twenty-five big ones. Thanks. Uh, no, no, look, I uh, I don't want to become involved. What's involved? To sail the boat out, pick up the grass sailor, back, dump it out. Hello and goodbye. I have no desire. To... I know what you're going to say. They all say it. You have no desire to embark upon the pathway to crime. And the mains, they don't want you to either. What mains? The mains. They need a nice, refined, law-abiding citizen element like yourself. Working this end of the deal. One shot operation, maybe once a year, understand? You got yourself a pretty little annuity working there. Yes, but there are the uh, the authorities. Of course, and they've been taken care of. What do you mean, taken care of? The fix, it's in. Now, look, I don't know if you know. You know. And if you're worried about the stipend, why, it's the policy of the mains to pay in advance. I have a little envelope here with 250 crisp $100 bills. Uh, Why don't you count? No, no, I, I didn't say I was going to... I'll gonna... just leave it here on your desk. No, please, uh, uh, I don't. You've got to look at the merchandise. Feel it. I would rather not. Nobody's twisting your arm. The mains don't operate in that fashion. Now, if this is truly against your morals, scruples, say no. 
And we still part friends, huh? <laughs> Come on, pick it up. Put it in your pocket. See you tonight. And we chalk up another for Jerry the Convincer. She's here with the boys. Oh, what's uh, what's the signal? Thank you, searchlight on and off three times. Yeah, go ahead, Stu. Uh, aim it down as much as you can, otherwise you can be seen from the road. Hey, that's the truck. She's blinking her light too. Okay, you hold her steady, Stu. I'll I'll make her fast. All right, you guys. Let's get her unloaded. Marty, you and Pete hop on board and start passing it off to Eddie and Joe. What do you say, Carter? We'll get you clear in less than ten minutes. All right, Stu, cut the engines. Okay, guys, move it, move it along. Hey, hey, what's that? What's what, Captain? Listen. Sounds like a car. Okay, it's a car. Probably a couple of kids looking for a spot to park and make out. <laughs> they won't bother nobody. Hey, it's, it's, it's a cop. Jerry, Jerry, it's a cop. So it's a cop. Well, how can you say it like that? He's probably dropping by to see that everything's going okay. Uh, what do you say, officer? What's going on here? You know what's going on here. I asked you a question. Look, this has all been taken care of. Oh, yeah? So, you just take off, huh? What did you say? I said it for your own good, pal. You'll only be getting yourself in a jam. You're all under arrest. All right, pal. Either they forgot to tell you or you're trying to shake me down. Look, let me give you 50 bucks and we'll call it square. Everybody, put up your hands. All right, take a hundred and beat it. Now your hands high where I can see them. I said a hundred and that's a top figure, so you can call off the act. Nobody move. Look out, officer. Good thinking, Marty. The police officer, he... He's dead. <laughs> Suddenly, it's no longer fun and games, no longer a lark, no longer kicks and thrills and excitement. An exchange of quick, angry gunfire, and without warning, life has become real. And for a courageous and incorruptible police officer, never mind what the poet said, the grave has just become the goal. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Walter Cronkite, one of a kind, writing, editing, working with a superb CBS News team to gather and report the news. But seldom fail. The daily, constant pressure of being the best. And there's only one place you can find this anchorman, this editor. 
Good evening, that's a strong trust, Cronkite and Company, only on the CBS Evening News. Monday through Friday on the CBS Television Network. Laws, said Mr. Jonathan Swift, are like cobwebs, which may catch small flies, but let wasps and hornets break through. On this particular theme, the cobweb of law has just been pierced by the bullets of some hornets. What started out as a romp around the honeycomb has now become a bitter and deadly serious business. He's dead. The cop is dead. Hurry up and unload the stuff. We gotta get out of here. You killed him. No, no, just hold on a second, Pally. We killed him. I had, I had nothing to do with it. You're in up to your ears. I was told... By you, specifically, that there wouldn't be any trouble and any, any danger. It was his own fault. He had no right to poke his nose in other people's business. What are you saying? He, he was an officer of the law. He was, he was doing his duty. I gave him a way out, but he was a chump. Now, don't you be a chump. Don't you try to be a hero. But, but murder. All right, murder. Nobody likes murder. Do I like murder? These things happen, you know what I mean? Hey, Marty, Pete, come on. Get the last of them bales off the boat and onto the truck. Now listen, Pally. Go home. Forget it. Forget it? What else are you going to do? Is that the last of it, Marty? Okay. Stu, get your pal here on board the boat and take him home. But, but what, what's going to happen to the police officer? How do I know? This was a cop who, for how to get his sooner or later, he, he's the kind that goes around begging for it. Just your tough luck you had to be there when nature took its course. <laughs> You'll be all right, Connor. No, Stu. I, I don't think I'll ever be all right. Look, it happened. But it's over. Nothing can be done about it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm just sorry I got you into it. No, I got myself into it. Look, I don't know how to put this, so maybe I'd just better say it. Cut it out. Cut it? Cut what out? The way you feel. Well, how can I do that? Well, at least don't don't show it. You know, like you, I, I, I thought this was a game. You know, a lot of laughs. I mean, this Jerry came over like one of those comic hoods from a 30s gangster picture. But he isn't. And they aren't. They mean business, and they play for keeps. These guys shoot to kill. What are you trying to tell me? If Jerry thinks that uh, he might be unable to control your conscience, you know, maybe you're going to run to the police. Well, your life isn't safe either. I keep looking at that cop's face. I, I keep hearing his voice. And you know something? He's the same one that gave me that ticket. Carter, will you listen to me? There's only one thing you can do now. You simply have to forget it. Now, you want me to come in and spend the night here? No, 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 Stu. But you are right. I'll just have to get over it. Somehow. <laughs> Lieutenant Paris. Reporting on Talon murder. Officer Talon was killed by a bullet fired from a 38 caliber revolver. Evidently, he had exchanged shots with his assailant. Two shells had been fired from his own gun. Nearby were tire treads of a very heavy truck. We can only assume he had interrupted a smuggling operation, most likely drugs. And that is absolutely all we have to go on at this particular moment. Officer Tallon, who's 40 years old, leaves a wife and three children. Carter, will you put the paper away and forget it? Forget it? Look, we agreed that was what we would both have to do. The man had a family. Hey, don't just say okay. Right, look, she'll get a pension. She'll be taken care of. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Look, she knew the situation. I mean, a man chooses to become a cop, a woman chooses to marry him. Well, they both know when he leaves for work, it could be the last time they ever see each other, and they accept that as part of their life together. Yeah, sure, sure. And as Jerry said, this was a cop who was bound to get it sooner or later. Carter. Look, I'm just as guilty as you are, but I mean, what's to be done? Oh, incidentally, one of the 
bullets must have gone through the glass just after the galley. I noticed it this morning. You better have it fixed. I never want to see that boat or any boat again. Come on, Carter. I'm going to sell it. Look, after a while, you'll get over it. <laughs> you want to know the terrible truth? After a while, I probably will. Lieutenant. Oh, thank you, Judy. I, um, wish I had some news for you, but we're still absolutely in the dark. Well, I have some news. Oh, this place a terrible thing like this to show you. Nice people couldn't be. Yeah, I know. I've been getting letters from everywhere. From people who knew Bernie, from strangers, and money. I, uh, I want to turn it over to you, Lieutenant, for the fun. At least the kids will be able to go to college. Hey, those five and ten dollar bills are adding up. I called you because I got something in the mail today. The mailman delivered a package. No return address. I opened it and I found these. Right. These are hundred dollar bills. Mm-hmm. They uh, add up to twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars. I don't know. There wasn't any note. Nothing. Twenty-five thousand. I couldn't believe it. What does the donor want to keep his gift a secret? There are those people who like to do these things anonymously. Whoever he or she or they are, may the good Lord bless them. You say it uh, came in a little package. Huh? Mm-hmm. Ooh, what sort of package? Oh, I got it right here. You mind if I take that? I. I would like to keep it. Well, I'll give it back to you. All right. Why do you want it? Maybe I can trace it. How? The department has ways. Wouldn't you like to find out who this person is? So you can thank him personally? Lieutenant Paris. Oh, yes, Inspector. Yeah, I have a lead. Well... So far out, I hesitate to ask for the manpower. Mrs. Talon received a gift of twenty-five thousand. Yes, that's right, anonymous. I know there are generous people in this world, but twenty-five grand? No, not hush money. I would say conscience money. <laughs> I know it's a very slender reed, but it's the only one in the pond. Okay, I'll run it. Hello, family. Oh, it's you. What do you want? How's Trix? I suppose everything's all right. Mm, the wife? Oh, she's still away, visiting her mother on the West Coast. Yeah. I'd like to be there this time of the year. Isn't this when the swallows come back to Capistrano? I, uh, I don't know. Or maybe it's when they leave. Huh? Uh, I'm not sure. Look, why, why do you want to see me? I came here to say congratulations. You are not going to be knocked off. I'm... I don't understand. What does that mean? All the mains uh, came in for a meet. You know what I mean? Uh, that little country toss that uh, we had with a cop. It was gone over in detail. You had done a wrong thing. What did I do? You yelled to the cop, look out, officer. You tried to warn him. You were on his side, remember? Well, I... I... The Mains didn't like that at all. But I said, look, we are the prisoners of our own philosophy. Now, how do you like that one, huh? But I says, once it happened, it happened. What's he going to do, run to the DA? No, he's in as deep as anybody. Now, uh... Did I say the right thing, Pally? Yeah, yeah, you said the right thing. So, there's where we are. Life goes on, right? Yep. Life goes on. And you got the 25 Gs to help smooth the pathway. 25,000. I looked at the paper this morning. Nothing. I listened to the radio. Nothing. The TV did all. Yeah, but just suppose, suppose someone might have seen or, or heard. Oh, somebody did. Who? The cop. And he's dead. I'm sure the police... I mean, 
Is it possible they could find clues? What clues? Boats don't leave traces in the water. Yeah, but the truck, the police said there were tire marks. Those tires, they already been stripped off. So, how do you feel? I told you. I feel all right. No, Sarah Jean, I'll wait for Mr. Nelson. I understand you're thinking of selling your boat. Yeah. Oh, it's too bad. I hope you'll still come around to the club. Uh, bring your drink? Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, the newspaper just came in. You want to look at it? Why would I want to look at it? I just thought I did. No, thank you. Well, it, it just there's a, a big spread on this cop. You know, Officer Talon, the one that got murdered? Is that all they can find to print about? Well, he was from around here, and I'm I... am sick and tired and fed up with murder stories, especially about this, this Officer Talon. All right, Mr. Andrews. People in all walks of life get killed every day. Oh, sure. I mean, sure. How, how long do we have to read about it? Now, just just bring me my drink. Mr. Andrews, the manager's looking at me. He'll think I did something wrong. Well, in the future, just, just please mind your own business. Yes, Mr. Andrews. Oh, um, Sarah Jean, I, I'm... I, I'm... Sorry, I, I'm just, I'm just not feeling well. Oh, that's all right. It's okay. Hey, how is everybody? Sorry I'm late, Carter. Sarah Jean, bring me a drink, huh? Then we'll order. Yes, Mr. Nelson. Uh, what were you yelling at her for? Oh, nothing. Just that there was a story about you-know-who in the papers today. Well, you notice every day the stories get smaller. You find them further back in the paper? Yeah, soon they'll go right past the last page and out. Huh? That's life. Hey. Sort of blew up inside about it. You know the terrible thing? The anger that I feel is also starting to, well, to diminish. You know, a guy like you should never do anything wrong. Yeah, and I won't. Until next time. You know what they say. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. So don't be tied into this thing. No way at all. I don't know about that. These gentlemen may think they're completely in the clear... And I suppose, from their point of view, there's reason for optimism. But the fact is, there are three leaves, exactly, which can burst the bubble. What are they? Weren't you listening? Well, wait for Act Three, and we'll refresh your memory. I can't believe how much things we've grown. Yeah, it's really taken off as a major city. The hustle and bustle of growth, the fast pace we live in. No, there's something to be said about the old days, uh, turn of the century. Life was less complex, simple then. Money wasn't everything. Quality was important. Oh, come on, Rich. Quality's still important. Name one company in Phoenix where quality's important. Okay, Allen Piano and Organ. Quality's very important. No, it, it's a tradition. I was talking to Don Myers at oh. Allen Piano. Don Myers said the quality of Allen's product and the tradition of their sales go back to territorial days. Yeah, well, in those days, people wouldn't stand for being taken. They just wouldn't buy from anyone that did. Look, Richard, good reputation, good products, and fair prices still apply today. That's why Allen Piano is still in business. You don't want to be taken today any more than your grandfather did. And remember, Richard, the lowest price isn't always the best buy. Sometimes it can be the worst buy. You have to trust the people you buy from. I heard that Allen Piano has a beautiful brand name piano for just $897 complete. By the people who have brought you good deals since Territorial Day. That's Allen Piano in Oregon, 3409 West Bethany, 10 West Main Mesa. for taking infinite pains. And successful police work depends on the capacity for perceiving apparently insignificant details. That's also the story of life, which can be turned around by the accidental meeting, the overheard remark. Coincidence, happenstance, circumstance. On these shifting sands does our fate usually rest. No, Inspector, that little carton is still our only lead. We're checking the box manufacturers. Are you, uh, Lieutenant Parrish? Hey, yes, miss. Come in and sit down. Uh, many times, Inspector, people pick up a box like this in a supermarket or a drugstore, so how could we ever hope to trace it? But it's all we got. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep trying. Now, uh, you want to see me? Uh, they said that uh, you were in charge of the officer, Talon Murder. Yeah, what's your name, please? Sarah Jean Howell. Miss Sarah Jean Howell. Your address? 918 Power Court. Power Court. All right, now, Miss Howell, what do you know about Officer Talon's murder? I'm not sure I, I know anything. But you think you 
You do know enough to come here and talk to me, don't you? Well, now that I think about it, I... Oh, no, Miss Howell, it's perfectly all right. It's natural. person thinks she knows something, then she's face-to-face with a police detective. <laughs> she can wonder if it's really legitimate information. I understand that. I'm, I'm just wondering if it was ever legitimate information. Well, why don't we find out? Well, now that I think about it, I'm just crazy. How many times have I said a thing like that myself? I'm sure you said it, too. Said what? Oh, just said that you feel like killing somebody. And you heard somebody say that he or she wanted to kill Officer Talon. He? Who, who is this person? Well, it, it didn't have to mean anything. You know, I'm sorry I came here. It just got me silly. You feel that you have to tell this to somebody. Yes, but now that I think of it again, I... Officer Talon was the finest type of policeman. He gave his life. Now, if you have the slightest scrap of information, you owe it to him. Okay. Because I, I know you'll see how silly it is. I work at the Peach Harbor Yacht Club as a waiter. Mm-hmm. But the day before the officer was killed, I heard one of my customers say, Oh, gee, I don't know. Well, all right, I might as well. This customer of mine, he was mad as a boy. Why? He was mad at Officer Talon. Because Talon had just given him a ticket. What did he say? He said, if I had a gun, I would have shot Officer Bernard J. Talon. Are you quoting this? Mm-hmm. It's exactly what he said. I remember, I, I was shocked. Because Mr. Ellsworth is usually such a nice, easygoing kind of person. Ellsworth? Mr. Carter Ellsworth. And Mr. Ellsworth said... He said this just because Officer Talon gave him a ticket? Well, I, I think he was mad, uh, angry, uh, about the way the officer went about it. He said something like, you think I was a criminal? You know how some cops are, arrogant, condescending? Well, anyhow, next night, the cop was shot to death, okay? I knew Mr. Ellsworth couldn't have killed him. But he, somebody said to do something, and then it happened. I'm crazy, huh? No, no, Miss Howell. You did the right thing. Mr. Ellsworth. Mr. Carter Ellsworth? Come in, Lieutenant Perry. Thanks, Ruby. I, uh, I don't know if it is anything, but it's just that, well, for the last few weeks, there's been a car parked on the street. Oh, where, Trudy? Uh, just past the fire hydrant. Oh, yeah, I, I can see him. Mm-hmm. He just... Stay parked there. You need to see that man inside? To sit in the car. I have the feeling that he's watching the house. Why? I don't know. I'm not scared or anything. It's just that I don't understand it. Let me use your phone. Did you get a good look at this fellow? Yes. He's kind of handsome, youngish. I don't think he's up to anything bad. It's just I wonder what is he doing? Jim? Lieutenant Paris. Check the computer. I want a license tag ID. The in state, Y U N three five three six, Blue Margetta Sports Coup. Yeah, yeah, hold on. I guess I'd steal a cop's wife. I just automatically notice everything. Yes, Jim. Who? Mr. Carter Ellsworth. Uh huh. Thanks. Trudy, hmm. the name Carter Ellsworth. You ever heard it before? Carter Ellsworth. Think. Hmm. Sounds like a mountain climber or somebody who'd write a book. But it's not familiar. No. Wait, it, it is familiar. I wonder why. What connection? What? Where did I hear it? The only way that you could have heard it would have been if Bernie had happened to mention it. That's right. He did. The night before. The last night. We, uh, we were sitting at dinner, and he was telling me about a ticket he'd written out to a man named Carter Ellsworth. He said, uh, you know the types that think they own the world. I remember the name. Why? Well, maybe it's nothing. I know we are committed to the theory... Bernie Callan was killed by drug smugglers. However, we have here a hypothesis 
that he was killed by a man named Carter Ellsworth in a fit of rage because of a speeding ticket. Afterward, Ellsworth, feeling remorse, sent Bernie's widow $25,000 and comes to watch the house regularly. I am proceeding along the following line. Today's special for me, sir. Yeah, I'll have the same medium rare. Thank you, gentlemen. What got into her? I don't know. I guess it's me. What'd you do, make a bat at her? I'm sure she'd love it. No, I don't know. She's been kind of short and sharp with me for the past week or so. Ah, you must be losing your touch. How you feel? Oh, better, better. I mean about everything. Oh, I know, I know. Millie's home, that's helped a lot. Well, I guess the world goes on. Sure. I used to say to myself, Carter, go to the police. I did too, but never very loud or strong. You don't know how many times I had practically driven to the police station. I suppose I'm a coward. What do you say we never talk about it again? Sure, sure. You still planning on selling the boat? That's the point. I couldn't tell Millie the real reason, and she'd only make me buy another. Oh, did you uh, you ever fix that glass that I was telling you about? No, no, I'll get around to it. I just wish I had the guts to do the right thing. You're doing the right thing. Look, it isn't as if you killed him. I'm an accessory, and so are you. But nothing, absolutely nothing, can bring him back to life. You're right. We simply can't talk about it anymore. Yeah. Who? Oh, well, have him come in. Hi, Bally. Hi. What is it this time? Well, is this the way to talk to a guy that saved your life? All right, what do you want? I like your style, the way you handle the boat. What happened when we got there, it wasn't your fault. But the mains will guarantee it won't happen again. So, Friday night, Friday... Are you asking me to... Yes, you could say I'm asking. On the other hand, you could also say I'm telling. I don't want any more of this. Why not? Look, a, a, a cop was killed. I, I I just won't go through that again. Who are you kidding? You loved every minute of it. That's a lie. Is it? I seen you while all the guns were going off. You had that look in your face. You wanted to be in on that. That isn't true. You wanted to have a gun in your hand, too. Hey, Pally. You know how often things go wrong? One in a thousand. So you got 999 more to go. Think of his widow, her kids. Look, you get 25 grand a throw, you can sneak her a few bucks. Isn't that the way to do it? Now, Friday night, it's shooting fish in a barrel. A guy knows the waters like you. <laughs> I can get you a couple bucks more. No, it isn't the money. It's always the money. And there's so much in this racket. Plenty for everybody. What do you say? Here. Let me put this envelope in your desk. No, no, look, don't. Come on, Pally. Pick it up. Put it in your pocket. Uh, see? Chalk up another one for Jerry the Convincer. Hello, Mr. Ellsworth. Uh, who are you? Where are you supposed to pick up your friends? What are you doing on this boat? What do you think? We're waiting for you. We? Oui. Oh, yes, there are three police detectives down below. Police? I'm Lieutenant Paris. But, look... What do you want with me? I'm taking a chance on blowing the whole case. But I want to give you a break. I still don't know what you're saying. We could have had the Coast Guard follow you and grab you and your friends in the act. Then you'd get the whole book thrown at you. But since I know you didn't kill Officer Talon, since you're more weak and confused than anything else, I'll go easy on you. You have no right. To... Now, you got yourself involved in this smuggling deal. A, a quick, easy buck. 25000 to be exact. But how did... How did I know? Actually, you were being paid sweatshop wages. A going rate for what you're doing is at least twice that. <laughs> then you sent the money to Mrs. Talon. Nobody knows that. It was your conscience. But you made a mistake. You work for this beauty products outfit. Hair 
standardized cosmetics. You used a little box from the company stockroom to send the money to Mrs. Tavern. Anybody could get hold of such a box. Sure. But we're building it up. Now, you were seen hanging around Mrs. Talon's house. Why? I, I go for rides sometimes, and, and I just park any place. It was your conscience. Still building. You used this boat the night Talon was killed. He surprised you in the act. There was a gunfight. One of the bullets broke this window or portal or whatever it is. No, no, it was it was an accident here on the dock. And the bullet went right into this upholstered part of the wall, or is it a bulkhead? It was pretty well preserved. And ballistics has determined that it was fired by Officer Talon's gun. Well? Look, Lieutenant, look, I... it's all circumstantial. I don't know how a jury would look at it. I, I have the right to talk to a lawyer. Sure. But you're not under arrest yet. Look, Mr. Ellsworth, you wanted to get caught. That's why you gave Mrs. Talon the money. Used a box from your own company. Never fixed the glass. Never looked for the bullet hole. I, I, I don't know what I want. Sure you do. You want some peace of mind. You want that more than anything else in the world. Let me help you. Help me? You're the kind of guy who can't help himself. It's not your fault. You just don't fit in. You want excitement. But you don't know how to do it legitimately. You're even going out again tonight. You're getting in deeper and deeper. Is that what you want? No, no. Then this is your chance, your only chance. Work with us. We'll get you out. All the way out. Now, what do you say? Well, what took you so long to find me? People are not, strictly speaking, heroes. Unlike Walt Whitman, they are not mortised and tenoned in granite. And they do not know the amplitudes of time. Most of us are like banners that are made of gossamer. We last but a day and face whichever way the wind blows us. I'll be back shortly. The name of our story is Jerry the Convincer. And why? Most of us can be had. Most of us are vulnerable to seduction, to fear, to greed. Most of us have to be won over. Carter Ellsworth needed a Jerry to convince him. Who or what is required to convince you? Our cast included Paul Hecht, Mandel Kramer, Ray Owens, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.